Good evening. I'm Louis Mossos, and this is Political Forum for March 27, 2013. We welcome today as our guest John Mulrow, the state senator from the 10th District. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum today, Senator Mulrow. Louis, thank you very much for having me. I'm pleasure, pleasure is mine. Political Forum is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. We welcome your questions and comments for Senator Mulrow by calling us at 312-738-1060, the telephone number at the bottom of your screen. During the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible on the air. I encourage you to call and have an open and frank discussion with the Senator. Senator, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I understand that you're a product of Chicago and the North Side, having attended uh, St. Pat's for high school, and you've received your uh, accounting and law degrees from Loyola, so that would make you intimately aware with your district, isn't that correct? That is correct. I grew up on the northwest side around North Avenue and Central, moved uh, further northwest. I probably, actually the old 10th district may have incorporated every place where I've lived, um, but currently the 10th district uh, in, is the northwest side of Chicago. Uh, it includes specifically the wards of the 38th ward, the 39th ward, uh, the 41st ward, 45th ward, and and also it, it incorporates the surrounding suburbs uh, of the north west side it encompasses an entirely schiller park norridge and harwood heights it also includes portions of river grove franklin park elmwood park rosemont park ridge displains and niles so that's a very diverse district uh, what are some of the issues that you've been hearing a lot about from the uh, constituents Okay, before I go any further, I, I, we also do incorporate some part of the 36th Ward as well. Uh, the major issues that are facing the 10th District are also facing every other district in in the state of Illinois. It's uh, the pension crisis that we're facing, the old bills. We've also heard from constituents regarding uh, concealed carry, which the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals recently said we had to craft uh, a law to to address that. And gay marriage has also been a, a popular issue uh, that, that, that people have been calling in on. So I understand the legislature is on a two-week break, uh, and you're back in your district. If I'll just put up the information here. If anybody would like to reach Senator John Mulrow, uh, they can call 773-763-3810 or just visit his office. Or they could email Senator John Mulrow at ATNT.net. So it's been a busy time at the Capitol, and now uh, you guys are back in your district for uh, for two weeks. What are some of the things that uh, you expect or, or you hope to accomplish during the uh, latter part of session when you go back to the Capitol? Well, right before we left, there were some pension bills that were both in the House and the Senate. We have to address the pension crisis. Right now, the, the pension payment, uh, since I've been in there, I've been elected in November 10, the pension payment has gone from $4 billion to $5 billion in fiscal year 14, it's expected to go to six billion. Uh, we only have a limited resources, uh, limited tax dollars, and a lot of that, those tax dollars are used to being uh, to make the pension payment. And when that happens, that uh, takes away from other services within the state that we we value, including education, taking care of blind, disabled, uh, or the elderly. And I understand you sit on uh, several committees. What are some of these committees you're on, and what are some of the uh, issues you've seen during the last few months of session? The uh, I've currently been appointed, or recently been appointed, to the chairman of the uh, Public Health Committee. I'm the vice chair of the Judiciary Committee. I also sit on the Criminal Law Committee and the Insurance Committee. Uh, the one of the the first bills that came in front of me in in the uh, as chairman of the Public Health Committee was the Medicaid expansion bill, which is uh, a bill related to the Affordable Care Act that is going to provide Medicaid or insurance to people that are currently uninsured provided they meet certain requirements. Uh, what are some of the goals that you kind of set yourself for 2013 going into this new General Assembly? My, my goal, and it's always been, and you know, I realize there's been challenges in the state and you know, I knew that coming in, and but I also have four children, and that's why it's so important to me that Illinois is a better place in the future than it is now. And what really is uh, a crisis, we're at a crisis stage, is the, the pension, uh, the ability to make payments to our pension, and the sustainability and the affordability of that system right now, 
which goes back and has been a been problematic for many, many, many years. And uh, if we don't address it, it's going to get worse. Um, and so that's the major, major, major issue that we have to deal with. The other one is we're approaching almost $10 billion in old bills. Uh, there, these are bills or money that we owe to people who have provided a service or a product to the state and that haven't been paid. And it's, uh, I believe it's irresponsible and it's our responsibility to, to pay these people for their services or their product to ensure that they continue to do business with the state of Illinois. Now, we've been reading a lot about uh, gaming expansion. I think uh, a bill was uh, introduced in the Senate to open a Chicago casino along with four new river boats across the state. Uh, it's been anticipated the proceeds with, from those uh, new gaming facilities would help uh, cover some of those old bills. Uh, what are some of your thoughts on the gaming expansion issue? You know, it's, it's funny. I mean, gaming is, uh, it cuts both ways. Uh, I don't think it's a, a great way to fi solve a financial crisis, but it does generate revenue. We are looking for revenues uh, to put into the state so that we can provide, you know, pay for some of the services that we value. Uh, the only, and, and what I see is the, right now, people are going to gamble, uh, but a lot of people in Illinois are actually gambling in places outside of Illinois, for instance, Indiana. So there is a cost to gambling. There's, there's no doubt about it, you know, and, and it is a problem, uh, you know, for some people. Uh, but if you're going to choose to gamble as, as entertainment, we'd rather have you put the money into Illinois uh, rather than Indiana. And if there's any costs associated by game, gam gambling in Indiana, you bring the, the cost or that we incur to back to Illinois without any benefits to Illinois. Thank you, Senator. I understand we have a caller on the line. Uh, hello, caller. You're on the air with Senator Mulrow. Hi, Senator. I was wondering, I know that the governor um, supports an uh, increase in the minimum wage, and I just want to know, are there any bills um, on the table for that, or where does that stand? The Senator Lightford actually has a bill I'm not sure it may be in the executive executive committee. Um, I don't think it's gotten out of that committee yet. Uh, so the, there is a bill that exists. She presented that last session as well. Um, so it's it's still in the process right now. Uh, if my opinion on that, uh, the minimum wage seven and a quarter that would be very very tough to uh, raise a family or to support yourself on with that wage. But you know, one of the concerns that has been brought up, though, is that you you don't we don't want people to lose their jobs as a result of uh, increasing their their wage too. So it's a balancing act, and we're trying to strike the right balance. And and Senator Lightford is a great person to be in the seat to try to strike that balance with both the business community and and on behalf of the people to to raise the wage. Thank you for your question, caller. I'd like to remind viewers you're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN TV. I'm Louis Mososa, board member on CAN TV, and this is a live interactive program. If you have a question for Senator John Mulrow, uh, please feel free to call us at 312 738 1060. Uh, Senator Mulroy, I know you've been busy in the Capitol these last few months, but I think your activities in the district have not ceased. Would you care to let viewers know some of the uh, programs that you've gone ahead and uh, initiated in the district? Absolutely. We're, we're trying to, I, as the, you know, the Senator, my, my whole goal is to provide access to people, re, be responsive to people, listen to them, and try to do my best for them uh, as my role in, as a Senator. What we've done to try to accomplish that in the past and going forward is to provide a community resource fair. We've had 300 to 500 people show up in the uh, the last summer that we've had it, or I believe that was in September. We've invited uh, agencies from the city, the state, the county, federal government, uh, all to be there so they can inform people of the services that that they do offer um, as part of part of government. We also uh, have been involved in recycling events, mortgage relief outreaches, tax appeal seminars. We're going looking forward to a, a women's self-defense in the in the fall and we'll also breast uh, cancer awareness. We also have a business technology event that we are planning in the in the near future for seniors so that they're able to understand the electronic devices and and able to navigate through that as well. Very busy times in the 10th, 10th District. I understand we have a caller on the line. Uh, hello, caller. You're on with Senator Mulrow. 
Yes, hello. I had a question regarding the cell, the cell phone ban. Should it be based on state law or city to city law? That's a great question. Uh, Representative D'Amico in the House just passed it out of the House, and I, I put my name on it to sponsor in the Senate. Currently, the city of Chicago has a ban on using handheld so cell phones when you drive. So you have to drive, you know, the car. You can use your phone, but you just can't have your hand attached to the phone. So you'd have to, you know, hook up an ear device or, or a beat on speaker. Um, so the city of Chicago has a ban for handheld cell phones. There's about 76 other communities that have a variation of when you can and can, uh, can't hold your, your cell phone uh, while, while talking on the phone while driving. We also have bans on cell phones when you're going through construction areas. And most importantly, the last session, we, we banned truck drivers or commercial drivers from uh, using their phones unless it was hands-free. And I, I believe it's an important policy. If we, we deemed it a policy that trained professional drivers should not be, have handheld phones or their phones in their ha hands while they're talking on it, I believe it's, it makes good sense to uh, have that apply statewide to passengers of cars that probably aren't as trained as someone in the uh, driving a, a truck. And, and the, it is a distraction. You could be holding your phone. It drops on the the, the floor, you, you take your eyes off the road, and uh, it's something that I think makes sense to apply statewide. So it is citywide right now, variations throughout 76 communities in the, in the, in the state, but we are uh, presenting a bill and hopefully present it soon in the, the Senate uh, to try to have it uh, apply statewide. Thank you for your question, caller. I understand we have some more questions. Uh Hi, you're on the air with Senator Mulroe. What's your question? Hi, um, thank you for taking my call. Um, I, I understand that the state is now required to craft some sort of concealed carry legislation because apparently we're the only state that is not in compliance. And I just wanted to know how that's coming together and sort of what you foresee a concealed carry law in Illinois looking like. Okay, the uh, so we, we're clear the Second Amendment uh, gives a person a right to bear arms. Our Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals recently said, and that's where this is coming from, their opinion said that we do have to craft a law that provides for concealed carry in Illinois. We are the only state that does not allow that right now. Um, my personal opinion is that, you know, I believe that everyone has a right to defend themselves uh, in their home or outside their home. Uh, I, I do believe in the Constitution. I also believe, and I've heard from many constituents, that guns don't kill people. Uh, people do. I, I, also, um, I also believe that, um, that there are people, though, however, should not have access to guns. We should have, um, I, I believe, background checks, at least the minimum training. And there probably could be some reasonable restrictions that are coming forth in the legislation. Uh, Senator Raul is sponsoring, going to be the sponsor of the bill in the Senate that deals with that issue. Not sure exactly. There's so many variations and we're trying to strike a balance and uh, to make sure something gets passed. Uh, the, in the House, they're taking a different approach. In the Senate, we're doing it under one bill. In the House, I think they're doing it a, more of a piecemeal approach and, and to see what issue should be eventually, I, I would think, uh, in, put together in one bill. So by June 8th, I believe it is, we have to have a bill passed. Otherwise, it'll be unregulated, unrestricted. And, and Senator, am I correct that it's a very complicated issue? For instance, uh, you want to allow concealed carry, but isn't the debate turn about where do you allow? Do you want to allow at hospitals or universities? And then if you want to allow public concealed carry on a university, what aspects, places that are open to the public, places where it's just students? So um, uh, how have... Uh, all the intricacies uh, complicated the debate. No, it is very complicated, and that's that's it exactly. I mean, that's where the debate is. You know, are, do we allow them in schools? Do we allow them on tra public transportation? Currently, you can't you can't bring a gun on an airplane either. But so all those issues are being talked about right now, and you know, I'm I'm hopeful that uh, together we're we're going to pass a reasonable law that addresses the uh, Seventh Circuit of, uh, Court of Appeals opinion. Thank you for that great question, caller. I understand we have another caller on the line. Yes, good evening, Senator. Um, I have a question concerning uh, foreclosures. 
the economy, as we know, is still uh, kind of sluggish, and many people, especially homeowners, are still looking for uh, good-paying jobs, and therefore they're thinking about possibly going into foreclosure, which doesn't help a lot of homeowners' prices. So is there anything uh, being done to help homeowners who, uh, who are underwater on their mortgage? I think the, probably it's addressed more on a federal level. There's HAMP programs. There's modifications that are, are trying to be, you know, done to keep people in their homes. I actually, you know, provided a mortgage relief uh, out, outreach that we brought all the major banks together to deal directly with people that came, and we held it at Wright University, and they, they tried to deal with the people directly to make sure that we were addressing them. And I think... Uh, my big, greatest uh, concern or wish is that we try to keep people in their homes that, that can stay in their homes, and that to me would be to modify their loans. Uh, there's also some talk about um, you know, trying to reduce the principal of people's loans to keep in their homes. Uh, as I, I'm not sure if I said this already, but I was a, a co-sponsor of a bill that actually addressed foreclosures of abandoned homes to fast track that process because right now it's a mess. It takes 700 days to get through the, the foreclosure process, whether it's an abandoned home or someone trying to stay in their home. And the bill that we drafted was actually only dealing with homes that were vacant where people had left and sort of just closed the door behind them. And that that and over time I saw that home being boarded up and sitting on the the block for a year and it not only affected that home home's value but everybody else's home on the block or their value and it also created a place where crime could be committed and so that was very important to me to address that issue the issue you're bringing up though is is actually a little more complicated because your people are in their home they want to stay in their home they've lost their job uh, and we're trying to get the banks to work with those people to modify their loans either extend the the term of the loan, try to reduce their payments, reduce their interest rate. Um, it, it's a tough time. So I'm, I'm hoping, and I would think that it's in the bank's best interest to keep someone in their home rather than have them uh, walk out of the home or foreclose the home for a, or sell it on a short sale for less than the mortgage for something less when they could actually work with the person who wants to stay in, the, in their home for that, for that uh, amount. Thank you very much for your question, caller. Uh, we have another question that somebody phoned in. Uh, is the state of Illinois making any progress on a recreational or scientific use of marijuana law in the near future? It hasn't made it to the Senate, and I believe Representative Lang in the House has been the uh, sponsor of that bill for some time. Uh, it's my understanding that it is still being considered. Uh, it's for medical, medical use only. Uh, so I would anticipate that does get called for a house vote, um, but you, you never know. But I, I think, to me, uh, you know, medical marijuana, if it's going to, and if it's protected and safeguarded properly and it's going to help someone through a really tough time and it's prescribed by a doctor, um, I'm willing to listen to a bill or consider a bill like that. Thank you for the question. I'd like to remind viewers you're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN TV. I'm Louis Mososa, board member of CAN TV, and this is a live interactive show. If you have a question for Senator John Mulrow, feel free to call us at 312 738 1060. Or if you'd care to find out more about the events in this district or to comment on a piece of legislation uh, in your 10th, 10th district, feel free to call his office at 773 763 3810 or email him at Senator John Mulrow at att.net. Uh, Senator Mulrow, we're discussing issues, uh, the foreclosure process and being able to carry guns and uh, appellate court decisions. How do you feel your experience as a prosecutor, attorney, and, a, and an accountant has kind of helped you in uh, deciding some of these complex issues? You know, I, I think my background in accounting and, and in law school, prosecuting, all brings great, uh, great experience for me to the Senate. But probably more important, uh, or as important to me, is where I grew up. I grew up with four brothers. I was the middle guy of, of five kids in a family. And a ton of people in the neighborhood got to know people. So and my dad was a laborer, uh, worked with the, the gas company. So we came from a working class family, lived in a two-bedroom home. That experience and uh, alone has brought me 
uh, a wealth of knowledge to bring to the Senate to try to represent people from the 10th district. The 10th district is represent or made up of a, a lot of working families, two mother, father working, uh, and with a bunch of families. So it's, uh, I think it all together is, has been a, so far it's the couple of years that I've been there, a fascinating, uh, experience for me, obviously a very challenging time, but, uh, I'm, I'm ready. I jumped in and I want to face the challenge so we can, Illinois will be a better place in the future than it is now. Thank you. And what kind of uh, motivated you to, to get into public service? Because as you said, this is you've only been around a few years, decided to run for the Senate. Yeah, this is this is my first elected office. It was November 10. And prior to uh, running for Senate, I, I've been in private practice, a neighborhood practice where I you know do various uh, law related uh, activities, real estate closings, trust wills. But during that time, as the kids were getting older, I coached them. I got involved in both the business community and the residential community, and I also served on the school board as the president. And I saw this as another opportunity to to help and uh, provide, you know, be of service to more people than just my immediate neighborhood. And I understand we have a caller on the line. Hello, caller. Uh, what's your question for Senator Mulro? Hi, Senator. Thank you for taking my phone call. Well, thank you for calling. Um, I have a quick question for you. Um, I read today that the U.S. Supreme Court um, seems to be leaning towards striking down the law that denies federal benefits to legally married same-sex couples. And I was just curious, how long would that take um, to go into effect? I don't, you know, the Supreme Court, they're going to, they have oral arguments, so they, the way the process works, and I've never argued a case in front of the Supreme Court, but everybody provides their briefs. Uh, and then they set the case for all arguments. I believe that was occurring today. It may take months be before the Supreme Court issues that opinion. And after they issue the opinion, it depends on what their decision is and the effective date. But it wouldn't happen before they actually issued uh, their opinion. Thank you for your question, caller. Uh, Senator Mulro, we have just a few minutes left. Are there any final comments you'd like to make? No, I, other than I consider it a privilege, I, I, I'm really enjoying the experience. It, it's, you know, I'm 53 years old and never saw myself in, in this spot, but it's probably one of the best things that I ever have in, engaged in. Uh, I've learned a ton. I probably should have paid more attention when I was a young kid in, in history class about politics. But what I have to say is the best thing that I enjoy or, or the uh, is when people come down to Springfield. We had a, a Girl Scout group come down, and t uh, there was 12 of them. We sat them in the Senate chairs. We sat them in the House chairs, took them to the committees, and we had a baseball team come down, a, a class of seventh graders come down. So if you're if you're able ever to make it down to Springfield, please try to get down there when I'm there, and I can give you the inside tour. But even if I'm not there, I we can get someone to show you around the Capitol. It's a beautiful building every morning. When I drive into the the Capitol from my room, uh, that I you know from the hotel, I try to drive down Capitol Drive. So I face, I'm running into the building, and it just reminds me of, of why I'm there, and the beauty and and the responsibilities that I have to the people of, of my district and the state of Illinois. Thank you, Senator. Uh, once again, if you need to reach Senator Mulro at his office, please call seven seven three. 763-3810. Senator Mulroy, thank you again for appearing on Political Forum. And thank you, the viewers, for your calls. We really appreciate it. And our technician this evening has been Steve. A Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by Can TV. Please join us again for Political Forum next Wednesday. Thank you and good night. Thank you very much.